All right, on this next MacBook, it says it doesn't power on. And as you can see, the battery has been replaced on this, which means that somebody has opened this and messed with it before. The first thing that I'm going to do is plug it in and see what happens when I plug it in. So here I'm going to take my DC in board, and it looks like we're grabbing 0.02 amps on the charger. That's no good. Next thing I'm going to do is unplug everything that's attached to the board and see what's messed up. So it looks like they ripped the speaker connector. That's fine. See, that's okay. You're allowed to break your own stuff. This is an end user. No insult to end users, by the way. Keep in mind that when I say all these things about repair shops that should be ashamed of themselves, and I'm saying you don't know what the F you're doing, I'm being mean to them because they're advertising their professional services to others when they have no idea what they're doing. It's not even like they're making educated mistakes. They're just f***ing it up for no reason with no knowledge. But that's wrong because they are screwing up other people's stuff. If you want to screw up your own stuff, then, you know, go ahead. More power to you. As long as you're not messing with high voltage electronics or stuff that's going to really hurt you. I got no problem with somebody destroying their own belongings. So they replaced their own battery. The first thing that I'd like to look at is the battery charging chip. Since the battery charging chip is going to be responsible for charging the battery, and th th what this board has described as its issue is not charging the battery or it's dead after replacing the battery. So if we were to look, this here is our battery charging chip. So as you can see, the battery charger chip is the ISL6259. Ignore Apple when they say it's an ISL6258. They're high. It is indeed an ISL6259. Speaking of high, watch Paul Daniels' software crash on me. Let's try that again. Let's try that again, Paul. All right, U7000, here we go. So U7000, my PP bus supply and battery charging IC. That's gonna be right over here on the board. And we're just gonna bring my microscope over to that section. We're gonna get it nice and focused. And oh, look at what happened when that person plugged in that battery that didn't come from store.rossmangroup.com. No, I'm fuck, I can't. I can't show that hard, but really. I could try to show that hard. I could go in hardcore with it if I wanted to. I could go really hardcore with it if I wanted to. This is what happens when you don't buy a battery from story.rossmangroup. I can't even finish that sentence with a straight face, but there's more going on here than you may imagine. Not only is the chip itself burned to the point of having a fucking hole in it, two holes in it, wow, but look at the difference between this resistor down here and that resistor up there. Look at this. This resistor has a hole in it. This resistor has a hole in it. That resistor has a hole in it. That resistor has a hole in it. God damn! That battery fucked this MacBook up. That battery just took this MacBook and broke its back, fucked its ass, and made it humble old country way, as Iron Sheik would say. So let's go over what these individual components are for here on Schematic and the Board View software created by our friends at Paul Daniels. Now, let's take a look at this resistor. R7051, what are you for? Oh, it seems that you're part of a current sensing circuit. So what's current sensing? Let's go over what something like current sensing is. So we have two current sensing circuits here, one for the battery and one for the charger. Let's go over that really quick. I'm going to start with the charger current sensing circuit. So this chip over here, U7000, this chip has four jobs. The first is creating a green light. It controls the charger AC OK signal, which is responsible for creating a green light in the MagSafe. The second job of this chip is to take the 18 volts from the adapter up here, where it says from adapter, open up this inrush limiter transistor and allow that 18 volts through the system. The third job is to take the adapter voltage, that 18.5 volts, use these two transistors to divvy it up into 12.56 volts. And the fourth job of this chip is to regulate charging of the battery. It's going open Q7055 over here and allow the battery to charge when conditions are proper for the battery to charge. Now, one of the things this does is allow 18 volts through, and it's going to come through right at this point after Q7080, which is the inrush limiter, and that's going to go to R7020. R7020 is a 0.02 ohm resistor. That resistor has a very low resistance. It's not going to affect the system in any meaningful way. However, there is going to be a teeny tiny voltage drop across that resistor. The voltage drop across R7020 is going to be proportional to the current draw of the system. So if the system is drawing a lot of current because it's using a lot of power and a lot of wattage, then it's going to have a larger voltage drop across this resistor than it would have if it was drawing a teeny tiny bicicleta, as Cartman would say, amount of current or wattage. Now, the ISL6259 is going to figure out how many amps 
the system is using by checking the difference in voltage at the top and the bottom of this resistor. So if I get 18.5 volts at the top and 18.499999999 volts at the bottom, it thinks, okay, it's not really using much. If it has 18 volts at the top of this and then like 17 volts at the bottom of this resistor, it's like, holy crap, the system is using way too much power. Turn it off, turn it off. And it's going to regulate turning off of this transistor. It's going to turn this transistor that off that goes to the battery so that things don't fry. Now, the ISL6259 is not directly attached to R7020. It has a line, CSIN and CSIP. These lines over here go to resistors that then attach to the charging voltage. So you have a 10 ohm resistor between the ISL6259 and the top of the current sensing resistor, and then you have a 10 ohm resistor between the ISL6259 and the bottom of the current sensing resistor. And then you got the same concept going on here for the battery. So you have this circuit that's gonna measure the amount of current that the charger is taking at R7020, and then right as the battery transistor opens, the first thing that it's going to go to here is R7050, R7050, is the current sense resistor for the battery, and you've got a 2.2 and a 0 ohm resistor that then go to the ISL6259. And as you can see, that entire system on this board was destroyed by that battery. Look at this chip. That chip has got a hole on it. That resistor is hurt. This resistor is not even a part of the current sensing circuit, and it's hurt. This resistor is part of the current sensing circuit, and it's sad. That resistor is sad, that resistor is sad. And just to confirm my findings, I'm gonna measure in resistance mode on the meter and see what each of these are. So according to the schematic, this is supposed to be 10 ohms up here. Let's see if you're still 10 ohms. 116 kilo ohms. This one over here is supposed to be 10 ohms. Seven kilo ohms. So yeah, this stuff all's got to go. It's all disgusting. So what we're gonna do is put a little bit of flux on the board and we're going to windshield wiper off the things that are bad. Let's make it nice and pretty again. This board's gonna look beautiful, just you wait and see. Now before we put the last resistor on, I'll add some flux, because I'm gonna expect it all to get flowed into place on that final heating. See how everything just kind of bounced into place? That's beautiful. Except for my resistor. It tried to run away. And its punishment is that it goes on the board upside down now. How do you like that, resistor? Now also remember, this is the board that's going to have that U8900 problem. So it would be nice if I redid the solder joints in the GPU buck converter before that happened. Because these always wind up being bad. Look at how much better the joints in the bottom look in contrast to the joints on the right. Let's look at this. Look at this, and then look at that. Look at this, that. Nice garbage. Nice garbage. Sexy joints, disgusting joints. Do we get a fan spin? <clears throat> no fan spin. All right, so let's see what we get on PP Bus G3 Hot. That's the rail that's created by the chip that had all the burned components around it. PP Bus is supposed to be 12.56 volts, and on our PP Bus, we get zero. Well then, zero? Hmm. Are you perhaps short circuited to ground? Oh, you are a little PP Bus. Well, one way to find out. What is shorting my PP bus? Well, let's put some voltage into my PP bus and find out. We have ground solder there. And the hot of our PP bus G3 hot soldered here. Okay, so we're drawing 2.7 amps at 1.2 volts. 
All right, so with the thermal camera on, we're gonna hit the magic Chinese button at the top. That is gonna tell us what the hottest component is. And the winner is this thing, because right under it is 38 Celsius, around it is 34 Celsius, but this chip itself is 50 Celsius. So let's see what that chip is for. What do you do? Why are you burning my board? That chip is Q7035. Q7035 is one of the two MOSFETs that creates PPBush G3 hot. So the way this works is this is gonna take the 18 volts from the charger. These two transistors are gonna turn on and off and on and off and on and off. So you're going to get 18 volts, zero, 18 volts, zero, 18 volts, zero. It's switching constantly. And the idea is that the 18 and the zero and the 18 and the zero is gonna average out to 12.56 volts. That's why we call it a switching power supply because it switches. This transistor is supposed to switch, but it's not switching, it's broken. So it's stuck on all the time. Since it's stuck on all the time, it's taking our PP bus G3 hot and short circuiting it to ground. And the reason we call it a short circuit is instead of the 18 volts making its way here, then switching and going to the system, instead of it going where it's intended, it stops short. The longer the circuit would be if it went everywhere in the system, the short of it is if it goes to ground before it gets to go where it's supposed to. Now, I'm gonna replace U7000, Q7030, and Q7035 as a trio, just to ensure that none of this nonsense winds up happening again. Let's say Q7030 is shorted, it's gonna kill U7000. Then U7000 is killed, so when I replace the dead UQ7030, it's gonna kill that, which is gonna kill this. So they're all gonna wind up killing each other together. So when you have a bad transistor and a buck converter, particularly a top MOSFET. The bottom MOSFET's usually not as important. When you have a bad top MOSFET, you'd want to replace all three of them as a piece just so that it doesn't keep happening. So I'm going to wind up getting myself another donor and go from there. Now, one of the fun parts of this repair is going to be not knocking off this trackpad connector. So I'm going to put a little metal shield over it. All of this shit from one bad battery. That battery took this MacBook and made it its bitch. And let's get this transistor on nicely. Kinder, gentler, fitter, happier ISL6259. Kindler, gentler, fitter, happier, more productive. Creating PP bus G3 hot. Kinder, fitter, happier, more productive. Kinder, fitter, happier, more productive. Not thinking too much. Kinder, fitter, happier. More productive. Not thinking too much. Still kisses with saliva. Kinder. Fitter. Happier. More productive. This board will be kinder. Fitter. Happier. 
more productive, kinder, fitter, happier, more productive, kinder, fitter, happier, more productive, happier, more productive. I'd like a burrito, please. May I please have some food, sir? I would like a burrito, please. I hope I fixed enough boards that I can get a burrito today. I think I've done enough for my masters. I think I may just go and get myself one. I think I may get one with some nice spicy hot sauce. Let's see what we get. What amperage usage? Ha! Oh, thank God! All right. As you can see, we get fan spin. Fan spin, baby! Which means it works. So this battery here, fucked this machine up worse than any knockoff battery I've ever seen in my life. I'm just going to show you the label on this battery so that nobody ever buys a battery that looks like this battery. Whoever made this battery, be ashamed. So you don't got to buy my battery at store.rossmangroup.com, but for F's sake, at the very least, to buy a good battery, because if you don't, that's what'll happen. That's it for today, and as always, I hope that you learned something. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'm out of here. Time for a burrito. To be fitter, happier, more productive, more working at the gym.